So, hi, my name is Amy Bell, and I'm going to read an essay that I wrote about being a mother. It's called A Mother's Paradox. Uh, I'll just start. It is Friday night. The baby is asleep after a full day of walks around the neighborhood, an exploratory play. My husband and I have eaten dinner and had much anticipated sex. The needs of each person in the household have been met. I can go to the other room to write. As the baby passes her fifth month, I am feeling less invisible than when she was just born. It's as if the development of her personality and the accumulation of a few big milestones has given me back some of my own weight as an adult woman citizen. I was wispy there for a while just after her birth, the milk pouring out of me and into her, a bit lost also when I navigated the sidewalks in the stroller. I felt like an alien out there in the first few months, some kind of weakened amnesiac rogue who'd gone dark on the radar of anyone with any sort of power. I was definitely working a job. I had the stress and exhaustion to show for it. Yet I earned no wage, received no accolades, and except for nightly help from my husband, was totally in isolation. I mean to say it is a radical thing to care for another human like that. Mothers and caregivers don't only know their children inside and out, they also know what it looks and feels like to step outside of the great capitalist machine so influential on our daily lives and be present in the free work of caregiving to be invested in the corporeal and not the corporate. Between my husband and I, I feel lucky to be the one to see how the arrival of a baby enables a mental and civic detachment from that system that at times seems to oppress regular folk. That's not to say there isn't stuff to buy. The stroller is a necessary burden. We own two strollers now. The regular stroller does not have great maneuverability, not like the jogging stroller, but it allows for car seat attachment. The jogging stroller has a built-in suspension, but doesn't offer much of an undercarriage for storage. These are the things I wrestle with now, literally. Both strollers are hulking things with multiple loud click mechanisms, at least five adjustable straps and buttons to trigger their collapse. I am pushing, collapsing, opening, or lifting one of them many times in a day. There is a nanny in my neighborhood, Berta, who I regularly see pushing two toddlers around in a double stroller loaded with two diaper bags, a mesh bag of toys, her purse, the actual children, and a plaid picnic blanket draped over the whole thing. She is petite, but obviously strong, and I love to see her pushing that elephant up the steep hills in my neighborhood. Since getting a stroller of my own and the child to occupy it, I realize how invisible they once were to me. For so long, I'd been taking steps to prevent pregnancy, to get it all in before having children changed me forever. Now that I'm strapped with my own boulder of a kid, I can actually see just how many blessed kids there are out there and the little places they occupy in the landscape. With my new eyeballs, I see children's clothing and toy stores, play structures and park benches, diaper changing stations, and of course, strollers. It's like I'd been, been living in an optical illusion. What else am I not seeing because I haven't lived it? And what must I become to be able to notice everything? I recall a peaceful evening, much like tonight, when the baby was bathed and fed and ready for sleep. I cradled her and shushed her, and with her hand she took the pacifier from her mouth and looked into my eyes and said some baby words, some little coos. Whatever she said, it was loving and gentle and saturated with adoration for me. I was everything good to her in that moment. And the power of that responsibility made me go blank for a minute until I could put her down into the crib and step out of the room. What is the saying? Mother is the word for God on the lips of children. I didn't feel like her God, I felt like her home, and I'm not sure what is more powerful in a human life, or if those are really just two words for the same thing. Becoming a parent, you're shown what utter biological selflessness really feels like. The hobbies and ambitions and conceits of self melt into a temporary puddle on the floor. You are a social mammal who mixed your reproductive stuff with another mammal. You must feed the resulting offspring milk and keep it alive, and for that it will rapidly attach to you for dear life. On the other hand, becoming a parent is brimming with a certain ego-stroking self-fullness. 
You are the child's existentially special and utterly unique caregiver. You're bonded by blood and scent, by face and by voice. The words you say matter. It is my face and her father's face which brings her security and peace enough to grow drowsy and loosen her grip on everything and finally go limp and warm in my arms. In such moments, I am both non-existent and totally shining, totally alive.